Welcome to Duval Daily, presented by GenJack.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Wednesday, September 11th, a day that I will never forget, a day that this country will never forget, and a reminder that we are, are stronger in this country, united rather than divided. No doubt about that in my mind. But the Jacksonville Jaguars, they need to stay united as well. And they're 0-1, coming off of a disappointing collapse in Miami. But they've got a big football game. This football season is not stopping. It is not slowing down. So the Jaguars, they have to prepare for the Cleveland Browns, who come in with question marks on the offensive side of the ball at quarterback, no doubt about it. A defense that is incredibly strong. But the Jaguars, I think that they have some questions, some issues from a personnel standpoint that they have to address. And they have to manage and try to figure out what the answers are to these questions, to these issues. And I will talk a little bit about more of an identity question for this Jacksonville Jaguars football team at the end of this show as well. But we're going to dive into some personnel questions and issues here for the Jacksonville Jaguars heading into week two of the 2024 regular season. Again, they are 0-1 in desperate need of a victory against another AFC opponent, another team that views themselves as a playoff caliber team, Cleveland Browns, certainly. So we're going to dive into it. Um, really appreciate y'all being here. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear like the hat I am wearing right now. Jack's Varsity Snapback just dropped these on the website moments ago. Go check it out, ginjag.com slash shop. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube. So these are not in order necessarily. I would actually say the last two personnel questions that we're going to talk about are probably more important than the first two. But is there a running back controversy? I know a lot of folks have talked about this on Twitter, whether it be Jaguars fans, whether it be fantasy football people. Um, is there a running back controversy? Like, should Tank Bigsby be the Jaguars' starting running back? And this is a question that if you posed to Jaguar fans a year ago, they would have said, you're out of your mind. A lot of folks didn't want Tank Bigsby to ever see the field again. But... Times change, right? Um, so Tank Bigsby did have a very good day. Very good day. Was he perfect? No. Uh, I thought one play in particular late, uh, Jaguars trying to pick up a first down short yardage. He kind of danced instead of just trying to pound up in there in the middle for a couple yards when that's all you needed. So that's certainly a teaching point, but he looked more decisive. He looked obviously more powerful. He is a more powerful back. Um, he was explosive. This is the football player that I've been telling y'all since the day the Jaguars drafted him. You're going to get. And yes, sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Hopefully the rain's not coming down too hard here. It is another gloomy day here in Duval County. Gloomy morning. No doubt about it. Uh, but. Tank Bigsby is a talented back. I had a second round grade on Tank Bigsby and the Jaguars landed him in the third round. And even though they didn't necessarily need a running back at that moment, I thought it was a good pick because of the value he represented. And you're starting to see some of that value. He is fast, explosive, powerful. He's got some creativity as well as a runner. So uh, yeah, you saw a good game out of him. Now, You've seen a lot of good performances out of Travis Etienne as well, and this was not one of them. And we haven't really talked about it on the channel yet. Obviously, the fumble was the glaring issue with Travis Etienne's performance, but it wasn't a strong day by him regardless of that. Like, he looked hesitant. He was slipping in the backfield a little bit, where Tank Bigsby looked decisive for the most part. Etienne did not, and again, just wasn't at his best throughout this ball game. It wasn't horrible by any stretch. Like he still had some decent runs. I mean, heck, the play he fumbled. I mean, that was a decent run until he fumbled. Uh, so is there a running back controversy? Like do the Jaguars need to potentially adjust snap counts at this point? No, I wouldn't say that at all. Travis Etienne has proven to be one of the most explosive backs in the league. A guy who forces a lot of missed tackles, whether that be as a ball carrier or a receiver out of the backfield. So no, I don't think there needs to be a running back controversy right now. But if 
Tank Bigsby continues to play the way he played and Travis Etienne struggles, yeah, you need to adjust things. Sure. I don't necessarily envision that happening because, again, I think Travis Etienne's a great back. So we'll see how it plays out. But at this point, no, the Jaguars don't need to have a running back controversy on their hands. Both of these guys can contribute. Both of these guys should contribute. I think I view this as a good thing. Like Tank Bigsby came out and played the way you expect him to. Travis Etienne had a bit of a down game. He can rebound. Tank Bigsby can build off of what he did, and you can have a good running back duo. Um, on the other side of the ball, is Antonio Johnson ready to start? Um, he started in this football game, obviously, for the Jacksonville Jaguars against the Miami Dolphins. And I don't think he looked physically unready. I thought he actually did a pretty good job overall in coverage. But in pursuit, uh, he just missed so many tackles. It was, it was problematic, to say the least. Uh, how many tackles Antonio Johnson missed on, and you know, bad angles, not not wrapping up, not form tackling. Is that just a product of this is a guy that was excited and and uh, you know starting his first game for the Jacksonville Jaguars, just a little overexcited, a little too amped up. Maybe, because I do think Antonio Johnson's a good football player. But they've got to get that the, that excitement level a little bit reined in and just focus on playing good football. They've got to, because you cannot have that every week. You can't have that week in and week out. And it wasn't even like difficult plays, um, difficult tackles necessarily that he was – like these were plays he's made – hundreds of times throughout his career, and he just did not make them against the Dolphins. So is he ready to start? Like, is this is this role too big for him? I don't know. I certainly don't think you yank him. Now, if this, if this tackling issue continues into week two, I think you start to look at some things, certainly. And I wouldn't necessarily, like, if, if there's multiple missed tackles early on in this football game, I wouldn't necessarily hesitate to try to adjust and do something different. You have other options at safety. And I know Terrell Edmonds is now gone. Uh, we'll talk to Doug Peterson later today. Hopefully Daniel Thomas will be up for this game. But Darnell Savage can play some safety for you. Obviously you have Andre Sisco as well. Uh, they have different options. But, yeah, Antonio Johnson's got to bounce back. He's got to. He's too good of a player not to, in my opinion, at safety. Um, three missed tackles. And they were all, he should have made them all. He absolutely should have. So, just keep an eye on Antonio Johnson. Good football player. I'm not trying to disparage him at all. I think he's going to rebound. But you can't miss those, that many tackles in a close competitive ball game. Tackles you should make. Next question, is the offensive line good enough? And this is such a broad question. Like, There's five players on the offensive line. Uh, there's multiple different things that they have to do throughout a ball game. But is the offensive line good enough? Um, I think that they are good enough when you want to be a balanced offense, when you call plays in a balanced manner. I think this offensive line is good enough. If you get predictable and you're unbalanced, I think that's where you saw issues against the Miami Dolphins, and I think that's where you'll continue to see issues. I don't think this is an offensive line that's good enough to say, we're going to run the ball when we need to, when we want to. I think it's an offensive line that's good enough to say, again, when we're balanced, when you're worried about us throwing the ball, when you're worried about uh, not knowing know what we're going to do, the offensive line is good enough. I think they're a very average group at best at this point based on what we saw in week one. I think that Anton Harrison will certainly rebound as a pass protector. I think Mitch Morse played very well. I thought Ezra Cle Cleveland did a decent job. Uh, Cam Robinson played well most of the game. He had a bad fourth quarter, certainly. So, you know, Brandon Sheriff, I think, is still fine in pass protection but continue to struggle in, in the run blocking department. Is the offensive line good enough to like win in late January? 
I don't know that it is um, without Trevor Lawrence just going superhuman. But is it good enough to run a balanced offense? Yeah, I think there's no question about it. You saw that for three quarters against the Miami Dolphins, who are a well-coached defense, very good secondary, pretty good, pretty good unit overall. And look, Jalen Phillips is back. No doubt about that. He was playing absolutely like he was 100%. And that's great for him. That's great for them. Uh, but I think the Jaguars' offensive line can get the job done when the play calling is balanced. When there is not, like, they literally ran the ball eight out of nine plays in the fourth quarter to start the fourth quarter. And then when they clearly had to pass the ball, it was like, all right, let's pin our ears back, boys. Let's go get it. So, yeah. The offensive line is good enough. The play calling, the play balance in the fourth quarter just can't continue. They can't do that. They can't say, we're going to run the ball and you can't stop us. They can't do it. They physically can't do it. Um. And I don't think that they're good enough to not have any running game at all. Like, they have to be balanced. A lot of teams do. I don't think that's unreasonable to ask. Like, yeah, you want to be a balanced football team. That's football 101. Um, could they improve this group moving forward? Yeah. You've got two offensive tackles that are on expiring contracts. Do you want to go get a first rounder next year? We'll see. Obviously, Brandon Sheriff on the final year of his deal as well. Do you maybe want to just, you know, say, we're going to attack left tackle, we're going to attack right guard and see what we can do here to improve the physicality and the overall level of play? Yeah, I think you could try to do that. Uh, and then finally, we talked about this yesterday, but can they overcome the Tyson Campbell injury? Like, you have Jarian Jones, you have Buster Brown, I think you have options, but. They got to do it. I mean, Tyson Campbell is their best cornerback, both in coverage and in the run game. It's a big part of his game where he's able to play physical, come downhill. Not a lot of cornerbacks can do that at that same level that Tyson Campbell can. So they've got to be able to overcome that, no doubt about it. And then my last question, which is not a personnel question, it's more of a identity offensively. Like, can you refine your balance? Because you lost it in the fourth quarter. You went conservative. I don't care what anybody says. They went conservative. They tried to get out of there with a win. But you can't go conservative against the Miami Dolphins when you're only up by three points and there's 15 minutes left in the game. You cannot do that. Can't, can't have that happen again. And as Dilla pointed out, Doug Peterson in his memoir, in his book that he wrote after winning a Super Bowl, heavily criticized Doug Marone for going into a shell in the second half against the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship. What did the Jaguars do <laughs> in the fourth quarter against the Miami Dolphins? The exact same thing. Can you refine your balance? And can you actually lean into the vertical passing game? I know that Doug Peterson comes from this West Coast back background. Get the ball out quickly. Uh, spread it out a little bit, right? But you've got an absolute weapon in Brian Thomas Jr., a vertical, and you don't have to use him vertically exclusively because he showed, he he showed you, on Sunday, you can use him all over the field. But when you have Trevor Lawrence who can throw the football deep the way he can, Brian Thomas Jr. who can get vertical the way he can, and Gabe Davis, if you want to talk about Gabe Davis as a second vertical weapon instead of a number one vertical weapon, that's huge. I mean, he can absolutely get that role done. He's big, he's fast, he's strong. And yeah, Christian Kirk showed he could get vertical from the slot, down the middle of the field. Evan Ingram can do the same thing. You got to get vertical in this offense, and that's under center, play action, keep the defense off balance by, you know, when you're under center, Doug Peterson said it, Press Taylor said it. Yeah, it gives the defense a little pause. They don't know if you're running, they don't know if you're passing. More under center, more vertical strike passing offense. You've got the guys to do it. You just have to do it. You have to do it. Um, and look, Gabe Davis, 20 yards per reception on three targets for the Jacksonville Jaguars in his first game. Average depth of target, 16 yards down the field. This is, this is your identity, in my opinion. 
You are a vertical strike balanced offense under center. You got to do that. You got to do it for four quarters, not three quarters. So that's kind of how I view it. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. Would love to know what you think about these personnel questions, about the offensive identity question I pose. Suggest what they need to be here. Uh, drop your, your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notifi notification bell. Again, you can check out genjack.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear like this hat I'm wearing right now. Jack's Varsity Snapback up on the site, genjack.com slash shop. And you can become a channel member here on YouTube. Help support the channel even further. Get access to some perks, including discounts over at genjack.com. Really, really appreciate y'all's support. Have a good one.